This video and every video on this channel is made possible by your support on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. I couldn't do this without you and your contributions keep this channel alive. You can also grab an official shirt over on prowrestlingtees.com slash 616 entertainment. What's up, Dan Dance? My name is Ian. Welcome to Mortal Kombat Monday. Today we're going to play all the way through Mortal Kombat 4 with... Johnny Cage. Thank you, disembodied announcer's voice. Now, I think when we played through with Quan Chi, we did the beginner tower. Fuck that, we're going for the warrior tower this time. We got Shinnok up at the top, Goro as the sub-boss, a long line of competitors in the way. And now normally, if you watch 616 Nitro or 616 Thunder... I usually cut out loading screens, but much like the Quan Chi episode, I want this to be an accurate representation of what it's like to come back and play Mortal Kombat 4 on uh, the PlayStation. Because this is not an emulator, this is not some fugazi recreation bullshit, this is a straight up PS1 copy. I always play the real deal here on youtube.com slash 616 entertainment. So right there, see how the screen totally froze? That's gonna happen. Warts and all, this is a proper representation of what it is like to play Mortal Kombat 4. And after the, uh, the episode playing through with Quan Chi did pretty well, you guys seemed to like it, and I said, hey, why don't we play all the way through Mortal Kombat 4 the same way we did Mortal Kombat 1? A lot of you seem to like that idea, so here we are. We're continuing. Oh, yeah. oh, how about that? Oh, yeah, nailed it. First try. Look out, look out. That is our first win, our first fatality. Cage wins. Fatality. Sorry, Tanya. You know, you put up a great fight. You look great doing it. But at the end of the day, Johnny Cage is going to get his hand raised and uh, your head's going to come off. Maybe your torso is going to get ripped off. Reptile might have something to say about that. We're going to find out. Now, I think I asked you guys this in the Quan Chi episode. But, whoa, how do we feel about Reptile's appearance here in Mortal Kombat 4? I think I asked you that last time because every time I see this iteration of Reptile, I, I tend to wonder... You know, like, how did I feel about this at the time? How does everybody else feel about it? It's certainly not my favorite look for Reptile. I also don't think it's my least favorite. Maybe it's somewhere in the middle for me. That was a nice little combo ski right there. The one and only Patch is Lugosi sitting next to me. Patch, what'd you think about that round? Nice good stuff. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Now, Dan Dan's at the time... Whoa! I fucked up. I pressed the wrong button when I tried to throw that. At the time that you guys are watching this episode of Mortal Kombat Monday, a video featuring a, a major channel update with some big news either just went live or it's going to be going live soon. Hold on. Up! Oh. oh, oh! We got it! You see that? We did it so late that Johnny Cage wins showed up. <laughs> we totally just fucked this up. But that counts, man. That's a fatality. <laughs> Forward, back, down, down, high kick. I was a little late. I was a little late. But we got it. Nonetheless. Dude, I gotta tell you. Johnny Cage, traditionally, was red and black. In Mortal Kombat uh, trilogy, I feel, was the first time we saw him in the black and blue. Now, the alternate costume here... Ooh, dude, the red flash on the kick is so sick! I'm, what I'm trying to say is, as we try to... We trade projectiles at the end there. What I'm trying to say is, I like the MK4 outfit for Johnny Cage quite a bit. I like it in blue, and I like it in red. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even sure which iteration I like better. Check the tape. I want to know how he just ran through my projectile there. That was some hog shit, dog shit, bullshit. Shout out to the one and only handy dandy Andy Jarek. Ooh, don't be flash kicking me, son. Whoop. Oh, man. I'm having trouble with these fatalities. Boom. But I got it. We're 3-0. and 0. 
with three fatalities. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm entering them at the very last millisecond, but we're getting there. We're certainly getting there. How are we feeling about Mortal Kombat 4, huh? I love Mortal Kombat 4, and I know that that's not a popular take. That's not a popular opinion. Remember when t opinions were called opinions and not takes? A lot of people don't uh, don't look back fondly on Mortal Kombat 4, but I'm not one of those people. I still like Mortal Kombat 4 quite a bit. I find it highly enjoyable. Oh! I know the, uh, the... Oh, shit. Sledgehammer time. I'm taking that. Oh, I can't get it. Give me that. Wrong button. Give me that. Give me the hammer. He won't let me get the hammer. What? Oh, no! Not every game was able to make the 3D transition nicely. That was a nice, uh, caught him off guard there with that projectile for the win in that round. Not every game was able to hop from 2D to 3D. Powerbomb nicely, but I think Mortal Kombat was one of them. You know? And there's... There's a line drawn down the Mortal Kombat fan base where if you go go to the history of Mortal Kombat, my my retrospective series, and look at the comments on part what was that part two or part three, whichever one where I covered Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon or whatever the fuck it was. There's a line drawn down the middle of the fan base where you either love deadly alliance deception and whatnot and you you're you're begging for remasters or you hate those and you say this is why i stopped playing mortal kombat because it sucked it's a hard line right down the middle oh yeah come on now perfect this time we got the torso rip done the right way I shut up so we could hear the bones breaking and twisting and we could hear the flesh separating. You gotta have the announcer saying Johnny Cage wins fatality. I shut up so we could enjoy it. Where do you guys fall? Do you, re do you really appreciate the 3D era of Mortal Kombat? And by that I mean 4, 5, 6, 7, that being 4, Deadly Alliance, Deception, yada yada. Oh yeah, look at this, dude. Boulder throw Palooza for the flawless victory. Get the fuck out of here, Fujin. Come on now. Come on now. The question is, can we double flawless this guy? I think so. Shit! Oh, I'm gonna throw you over there. He got me. That's okay, though. Because we got him. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. Got him. Oh, yeah, I don't think so. Wham, sucker. Patch, what do you think about that? Good job. Thanks, man. Uh, you know, I'm working really hard here to pick up these wins. Anyway, what I was trying to say earlier was there's a major channel update video. Either it just dropped or it's dropping next week. I don't fucking know. I, I don't have my calendar pulled up in front of me, but... There's going to be some big changes here on this channel. You know, doing four weekly shows with Mortal Kombat Monday, 616 Nitro, 616 Thunder, the UFC Championship Tournament, and retrospectives like the history of God of War and all this stuff. I think it was a mistake, and I've said this before, but I'm just reiterating. I think it was a mistake. I think it's overloading the channel. I don't think you guys have time to watch all of this stuff. And I don't want to put out more than you can handle. I don't want you to have to choose, like, well, what am I going to watch and what am I going to ignore? That's not good business. That's bad business. And I'm not in the business of bad business. You understand? So I'm going to make some changes around here. And I'm going to focus more on... Not more on... <laughs> I'm going to put more focus into... Oh, not get my arms broken. Retrospective scripted content. I think... That's what the majority of you come here for. That's what I like to shit. That's what I like doing the most. And uh, I'm going to put more focus into that. I, I, I will forever wonder, I suppose, Powerbomb, if the history of God of War has been a complete and utter failure because I'm overloading the channel and they're just getting swallowed, or if the algorithm just didn't pick it up for some reason. You know, YouTube changes. YouTube is constantly changing. There is no science behind what to do or when. So, and that falls on uh, falls on the creators. That falls on the me's. That falls on the you's. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen or when. But 
I do, uh, I do shoulder some of the blame in thinking that maybe I'm just doing too much and I'll, I'm going to make an adjustment. So we're going to switch back to three videos per week rather than this four and five bullshit. And I think that that is going to be better in the long run. You know, I, I've always wanted to focus on quality over quantity and the attempt to deliver a high qual a, a high quantity of quality. I, I think I think maybe I've learned that that's just not um, it's got to be one or the other, you know. I say as I'm still going to be putting out no less than three videos per week, with one of them being like deeply scripted, in-depth shit. So it's it's going to be fewer videos per week, but it's going to be more work from me. And it's probably going to be, like as far as time goes, more for you to watch. So I don't fucking know, man. I don't know how to juggle all this shit. We'll figure it out. Frankensteiner for my deeds. Check this out. Check this out. Oh yeah, Sonya, I love you, Johnny and Sonya. You're gonna have a baby down the line, but maybe not now. Fatality. That's good shit, man. And Reptile's Lair, that's a great stage, I'm telling you. But being, oh, we're on Gore already. What are we, we're like seven and oh, right? I'm fucking flying through this. Maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I should have done <laughs> yeah, we're seven and zero. Oh. oh, don't be taunting me, you son of a bitch! A classic fight, Johnny Cage and Goro. Oh yeah, dude, I'm fucking flying here. And at the time that you guys are watching this episode, my I think my maybe one of my favorite episodes of this show all season went live. Oh! It went live last week, which was the uh, the look at Sega Genesis oh! versus Super Nintendo in regards to Mortal Kombat 1. That's the type of scripted in-depth looks that I'm talking about. I want, or the 616 Thunder episode looking back at the uh, the wrestling magazines from 22 years ago. I want to do more like that, you know? And I think that is uh, that should be my focus going forward. And if I if if anybody is disappointed by the fact that I'm not going to do four weekly shows and sometimes there's not going to be like four and five videos per week, trust me, this is for the better. And give it a chance, because I think you're really going to like what's to come. Um, and I have... God damn, look how much damage that sound does. I have not been secretive about the fact that I have some really cool ideas in the works for more retrospectives, you know? Season 3 of Triangle X Squared Circle is not all that far away, because I'm getting the itch... Fuck! Once again to cover wrestling games. We just first tried Goro, man. Eight and oh, we're flying. I'm getting the itch once again to cover wrestling games super in depth, based that retrospective style. And um, I got more one-offs I wanna do, man. You know, the Life and Death series, two of those were big hits. <laughs> so I really like doing stuff like that. And uh, I think you guys are gonna like it as well. Oh! Flash kick didn't land, but the uppercut does! Look at these Kombowskis, Shinnok! No can defend! Get up! Oh. You're not stealing this from me, pal. Oh! He fucking stole it from me, pal. Unbelievable! Shinnok with the comeback of the century! Patch, what do you think about that? Major upset. It was. That was a major upset. When I was a kid, I didn't really understand what an upset was. Dude, I will spam these if you're just gonna run into them like an idiot. Fuck you. Oh! I still got the flawless on you, sucker. Flawless victory. You're darn right it was a flawless victory. When I was a kid, I didn't understand what an upset was. And I remember specifically when Jeff Hardy beat Triple H for the Intercontinental title uh, on SmackDown. And Jim Ross goes, what an upset! I didn't realize that an upset was 
Fuck! Oh man, he just kicked my fucking ass. I didn't realize that an upsent met as far as the odds are concerned. So like the odds makers... Oh, check this out, man. We just set a record. Six. One. Six. I don't think we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna find out what's at the bottom of this well. And I'm gonna let it tick down to one just to fuck with you guys. But we're not going all the way there. Uh, it, we, the, the term upset, of course, is referring to the odds makers. So they would say like, oh, the, the favorite was upset here. JR goes, what an upset! And as a child, I'm like, that's not upsetting. Everybody wanted Jeff Hardy to win. Who's upset by this? <laughs> Oh man, so now I'm gonna ask you guys to get in the comments and tell a story similar to that What is something that you just didn't really understand as a kid and then you got old and you're like, oh, that's what that means Whoa. Shit come on now. Let's not let this fucking god damn it. I was gonna say let's not let this get away But that one didn't start very nicely, but it's okay. Because, you know, we were absolutely just flying through this. It was almost a very short episode. And you guys aren't looking for very short episodes. You know, maybe maybe some of these go a little long. But I don't think you're looking for very short, right? Dude. Whoop. He smartens up at a certain point. Oh! Shit ass. No! No! God damn it. All right. From 8 and 0 down to two straight losses, Shinnok is proving to have something to say about this, huh? And yes, indeed, I let it count all the way down to one again. Johnny Cage. And feel free to let me know in the comments if you prefer the highly edited style with loading screens taken out and all that stuff, or if you prefer this more natural, uh, you know, uh, order of things. Let me know. Because I was doing the work before. It's way more work to cut out the loading screens. And if, that, if that's what you guys want, I don't mind going back to it. I'm just trying new stuff, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, check... Shit, I was gonna say check this out and hit him with a big old rock. But he ducked underneath it. Patch, are we picking up the win on this round? Yep, I think so too. Thank you for having faith in me. Anytime. <laughs> Shit. Whoop. Oh, yeah. I'll take it, dude. I'll take it. Not all the way to the bank, though. Oh, I headed him off with that one. Shit. <gasps> oh! That will do it. We took a neck bump off the jump kick, but his fucking head is melting off his shoulders. He's falling into the double portal of doom. That's gonna do it. Get the fuck out of here, Shinnok. Shinnok's menace is over. You are the supreme champion of Mortal Kombat. I know, as if there was any doubt regarding the situation. Hello? <laughs> What to say? I guess I can start by thanking all my fans out there. Well, that's enough of the mushy stuff. I mean, let's get real here, huh? When am I gonna get some real competition? Come on, don't get silent now. Where are all the cheers? Hey, wait a minute. I'm your number one guy. I'm gonna remember this. Now, if you're anything like me, that ending always kind of bugged you. Because through the first, like, I mean, if we're counting all of them, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, Ultimate 3, Trilogy, 4, that's six games. Through all of those, there was almost zero actual character development for Johnny Cage. And Mortal Kombat Trilogy was the first time that we saw some, and then this bullshit 
set it all the way back to the start. If you want to learn more about Johnny Cage's character development, feel free to check out The Evolution of Johnny Cage, which is a video I put out about a year ago, which covers his entire history, his entire character arc from the beginning all the way up to current day. It's a really goddamn good video, and I think you'll like it. But until next time, Dan Dans, I love ya, and I'll see you soon.